Hey guys, it's Master Fiji here. Just right off the bat, I wanted to thank everybody for all of the recent support that you guys have been giving us here on our Force of Will videos for this channel. We've been doing it for... I don't even know what, when our first video came out. I think it came out just a little bit before Christmas time in 2016, so coming up to pretty close to a year now. And, you know, like, we've, we've gotten a, a bunch of support all throughout, but... Just recently, you guys have been dropping a lot of uh, good constructive criticism, smashing that like button, and just really making us feel like you guys care about what we do here. So, uh, Dayman's not in this video just because he's busy today, and I've got some other work to do later, so I'm just soloing this video, and I wanted to get it out before the pre-release to Ancient Nights. And just as a bit of a correction for one of my past videos, I... Don't know why, but I was under the impression that it was ancient knights, as in like the dudes with the the pointy sticks that go fight the bad people. You know, like KN knights, but apparently it's just ancient knights, as you know, that uh, time of day when it gets dark out. Anyway, I just you know just want to throw out that shout out to all of the recent support we've been getting for this channel and our Force of Will videos. So you know we'll keep making them, and you guys keep uh, keep supporting us. So you know. Thanks a bunch diddly. Anyway, so in anticipation for the pre-release for the new set, I was going online and I was looking to see if I can find any builds that somebody that some other YouTubers have come up with for Guild the Gifted Conqueror. And I've noticed that for some reason there just aren't any good builds that I could find, or they're ridiculously close to what came out of the box. I've also seen like all of the, the sneak peeks and all the spoilers that they've had for the guild support in Ancient Knights, and to be perfectly honest, other than maybe that one, like, water drop dude, leaf guy with the, the face that looks like he's seen a thousand lifetimes of death and suffering, um, aside from maybe sneaking that dude into, like, a sideboard or maybe taking out a couple of, uh, chants or resonators from this one, I don't really think I want to run any of the stuff that they showed in the sneak peek. Most of the stuff I'm going to get from Ancient Knights is probably going to go into what I'm trying to make my Rhea deck right now. And I wanted to finish that one and post it before the pre-release as well. But, unfortunately, the cards that came in in the in the deck and then the stuff that I threw in there, you know, you'll actually see it in a Versus video I did against Dayman. That caused me a lot of pain and suffering. Um, so look forward to that if you guys like to see me suffer. But, uh, I don't know, just none of the stuff I could come up with with what was available for Rhea from her deck in previous sets just really was any good. So, anyway, I decided to make this guild deck. I've made it um, red, white, and green. So it's a, a three-color deck, but the color fixing isn't super difficult with him. And, yeah, like I said, aside from that one card I might want to slip in, there's I think this deck is good the way it is. So, let's get into it. Obviously, the ruler is uh, Gil on his uh, ruler side, with Judgment for three. Oh, are we going to get some focus in there? Ooh, come on. There we go. Okay. So he's got uh, Judgment three, Energized, just like with all the rulers that came out of from Curse of the Frozen Casket onward. And uh, he's got the ability, and this is one of the best abilities that this guy has. Remove an elemental in your graveyard from the game, produce green, and spend this will only to play Spirit Magic Chance. Uh, play this ability only once per turn. So, it would have been cool if they made it so that you can have it for more than once per turn, but, uh, oh, 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 jeez. Oh, jeez, my phone's being a butthole. Sorry, guys. Whoop. Oh, yeah, just a teensy bit of a local, local earthquake here. Um, and he's also got the ability tap, search your deck for a card named Gentle Breeze Elemental, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So, the cool thing about his tap ability is, especially that I play this deck around turn 3 or 4 or onward, um, you're really going to be wanting to not really tapping him for stones, but tapping him for grabbing those Gentle Breeze Elementals if you haven't seen them all up until that point, because that way you're guaranteed to put something into your grave for his first ability to remove from the game to produce that green to play other spirit chance and on top of that it actually helps thin out your deck amazingly and like this deck has a decent amount of draw actually has a, a lot of draw but with this in addition you're never having those weird turns where you have an odd amount of stones and everything in your hand is even 
So then you can tap him, grab that elemental, fill in that final slot, fill your grave with more fodder for sacking to produce that green for spirit's chance. And on top of that, you're thinning out your deck so you can see what you need specifically to you know counter your opponent quicker. Also, there's a skin of a rinky do at the bottom there, a little skeg boo boo. And uh, I don't know what it does. I don't think anybody does. We'll find out eventually. I hope it's not a gimmick. I really hope it's something that's awesome for Gil because, again, like I said, the support that has been released so far isn't really amazing. So, um, the way that I play the deck, I don't really flip him all too often. Originally, when I was making this deck, I wanted to make it more ruler centered and put in those horses those blazing horses or whatever, the one drop uh, resonators that have, um, what is it, inheritance, one red, give target J slash resonator plus two plus two for the turn hastes. And I wanted to, because on his um, jailer side, he's got barrier, which is phenomenal. But the problem with it is that that's it, you know, like until we find out what his second ability on this side is, um, I don't know, he's really not that amazing on his ruler side, so. Also, uh, one thing to note that's really important is do not flip him early game. If you haven't used all of your, um, what is it, Gentle Breeze Elementals, don't flip him because he loses the ability to search for him on his ruler side. Anyway, he's an 11-11 barrier and he's still got the remove from grave to produce green for spirit chance ability. So, yep, yeah, I think he's really cool. I'm going to say it again and I've said it a bunch of times before. This is Gil Alchemat, and we are definitely going to be seeing that later on with the story development for this new set. All right, you know what? Let's uh, let's get straight into the stones, just because there's nothing really fancy about them. Up until this morning, when I was playtesting the deck, I had four basic wind stones, um, but I brought that down to three because for some reason I kept finding myself not having enough white in hand. So I've got three basic uh, wind magic stones. Um, and because I, I think I might have given the one or two that I got from Curse to Dana because he, Dana, sorry, to Dayman, um, because he was using it in some deck. But anyway, this is, I've got these as a, a proxy. These aren't actually, uh, fire basic magic stones. They're supposed to be the green red ones, which I think is, um, the blasting waves. So I've got three of the green red stones, um, Magic Stone of Blasting Waves. And then I've got four of the Magic Stone of Gusting Skies. Now, the reason why I'm running more... Obviously, every stone's got green because the deck is dominantly green. But I need white more so for um, these really awesome chants that I'll show you guys later. So, running four of these guys. Ten stones. I usually don't run more than ten stones, though my newest version of my Gil Alhamet deck does run... I think either 12 or 14, I can't really remember. Anyway, let's go straight into chance. So this deck doesn't actually have any resonators that have built-in flying. So I include uh, two of the one drop green secluded elven village Amon Sul. Now, one, one thing I actually learned about this card recently, just because for some reason me and Dayman and Teacher Teacher are absolutely uh, notorious for not actually reading cards all the way through. We kind of just like preferentially read. So it's a one green addition. Uh, elf resonators you control gain plus zero plus 200, which won't affect the stack at all because I don't run any elves. Um, but then it has J resonators your opponent control with flying cannot attack your resonators. We totally forgot that. Um, I only read it during a match against Dayman recently. And it's super important because we run Dreams of Flight in this deck as well, so if your opponent drops a precision creature or gives it one of its creatures precision and it wants to attack one of your creatures that's um, rested, you pretty much just, boop, quick cast your Dreams of Flight. If you have Secluded Elven Village Amon Soul out, he can't target or she can't target your creatures, which is phenomenal. And then the second part is J slash, or third part, J slash Resonators you control uh, can block uh, J slash Resonators with flying. So this is your defense against flying. It's a one drop. It's really awesome. I run two just so I can see at least one per game. And, you know, two isn't actually small for this deck just because we have so much drawing. Then, as I promised, we're running three Dreams of Flight. 
It's got quick cast, and almost every card in this deck has quick cast. Oh, all of my chance, anyway. And Remnant, I really wish there were more good Remnant cards that I'm hoping there will be with uh, the sets that come after Ancient Knights. There are a couple of good Remnant ones in there, but there needs to be more just because I love that mechanic. Um, minus the whole ridiculous grave hate that's happened with uh, the two sets prior to this one. But anyway, so it's got Quick Cast Remnant for one white, and it's got Force, Roll 1, uh, 1 die, Target J slash Resonary Gains, plus X plus X, and Flying until the end of the turn where X is a result of the roll. I'm super unlucky when it comes to rolls, except for that one game with uh, Darkness Book versus Light Book. You should totally check it out. I'll include the, the link at the end of this one. It's probably my proudest match ever. But um, yeah, I don't get very good rolls on this. I'll get like on average one to threes. I usually never get four to four to sixes. But the important part is giving stuff flying because I want to be able to fly over my opponent with a resident. I'll show you guys later. Or I want to be able to on the fly, give, heh, no pun intended, give one of my opponent's resonators flying if they're trying to precision into one of my creatures if I've got uh, Elven Village on the field. So, three of those. Now we're getting into more of the theme of the deck. I'm running three wins of Vitality. It is one of the theme cards that came out with the new uh, guild, the Gifted Conqueror deck. And it's a spirit magic chant, so it works with um, the Gentle Breeze Elemental. And it's got quick cast. You may play this card anytime you have priority, blah, blah, blah. Target J slash raise under your gains plus 600, plus 600 until the end of turn. This card is phenomenal. Honestly, if this card will also had remnant, like um, rapid growth, so plus six, plus six and remnant, it would probably go into every single green deck from now until this set gets rotated. I wish it had remnant. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Anyway, I used to run four of these. I run three now because I needed to make room for a one slot in the deck which again is not that big of a deal because you do so much drawing but uh, the cool thing about this card is that you don't necessarily have to play it during your turn if you have one of the gentle breeze elementals in your grave wait until your opponent's turn and if they want to body into one of your resonators that would be just enough to kill them essentially just pop one of the gentle breeze elementals from your grave give your creature plus six plus six and then just laugh Okie dokes, here's the bread and butter of the deck. These are the, the card that we're going to be searching for and we're going to be putting into our grave. And then as I'll show you guys with a chant later on, we're going to be bouncing out of our removed area back into our hand or into our grave and just uh, creating this amazing cycle to constantly be drawing cards and producing green for uh, spirit magic chants. All right, so it is a one drop Gentle Breeze Elemental Green. It is, it's got quick cast and it's just draw a card and that's it. So I run four of these, honestly, any deck that runs the new Gil, the Gifted Conqueror should run four. I don't think you could ever justify running less than four. And ideally the way you run this deck, you want to start your turn with one of these in hand if you can, but you never want to start off with more than one because you want to be able to search for them and like essentially mill out your own deck so that you can get all the good cards faster. So run four of these. So those are all of our one drops for chance. Now we're gonna get into our two drops. So that uh, Gentle Breeze Elemental works phenomenally in a combination with uh, this uh, one drop white and uh, one colorless card called Release. It's a chant, it actually doesn't have quick cast. This is one of the few cards that doesn't in this deck, um, but it has the ability to put a non-magic stone card from your removed area into your hand and draw a card. So the combo that I've wor found works best is you have one of these in grave, right? At the beginning of turn, you remove it from the grave into your removed area to produce one floating green for spirit magic chance. You tap of any color, probably green and white, to play release, which lets you draw a card. So you've netted one card and lets you put this into hand. So technically you've drawn two cards. Then you use that one green floating to play this which now goes into your grave, which means that you can use it later to produce green if you want to play your, uh, what was it, your Winds of Vitality or even another Gentle Breeze Elemental or the Cancel that I'll show you guys later. And you get to draw another card. So essentially you've netted yourself three cards uh, and one of those cards goes back into your grave that you can use for later time to produce the green mana. So I think it's a phenomenal combination. I run three releases 
in the deck. I used to run four, but again, I was just, the deck was having way too much draw and not enough substance, so I run three of these guys. And as in good form with any dominantly green deck, I run three Magic Stone Analysis. It's a one green, one colorless chance. Search your Magic Stone deck for a non-special Magic Stone and put it into your field and then shuffle your Magic Stone deck. I also used to run four of these, but that was back when I was running four green basic Magic Stones. And uh, as I'll show you with my, uh, my Resonators, your ideal opening... Uh, stone would be just a basic win magic stone if you're going first or sorry if you're going second it's good because then you can pop your energize off of gill tap that and then play one of these if you have it in hand to grab another stone and then play the resonator that i'll show you guys later um i wouldn't run four just because even with running three basic win magic stones and then three of these things i do find that on occasion Oh, I'll have all my basic magic stones out, and then I'll have one of these things in hand as just a dead card. So I just run three. With all of the ridiculous amount of additions that are just brutal, especially the Komodos in Dayman's uh, Kagya deck, and then you've got your Neo, Bad Neo, Shadow, Neo Barrier of Shadows, and uh, your, what's that one? Barrier Seal. Barrier Seal for the Lumia stuff, your red whites, that just gets rid of your grave, which you really, really don't want in this deck. Like, you're not recurring a lot from the grave, but you want to be able to have those um, Gentle Breeze Elementals in grave to pop them during your opponent's turn to cast stuff. So I run two Heavenly Gusts. Again, with all the drawing that we have in this deck, that's not that big of a deal. It's got Quick Cast, uh, Destroy Target Edition or Regalia. Regalia. Regalia isn't in rotation anymore, so that's a little bit redundant. And it's got Torrent, Destroy All Editions, and Regalia, your opponent controls. And with the amount of Quick Cast and the amount of available mana we'll be having in this deck, getting the Torrent's not that difficult. So, Also, now we go into our three drops. I actually originally, when I got the deck, the first thing I did was take this guy out just because I hate playing counters. I just feel like it kind of sets a bad precedence for when you're facing your opponent. And just like, I don't know, I play this game for fun. You, I do make competitive decks and try to make them as best as I can, but running ridiculous amounts of hand control and uh, counters have never really been my jive just because essentially it just like, it pisses everybody off and it doesn't, I don't know, it's not fun, but this deck needed a little bit of extra oomph, so this is the Spirit Magic Chant that came with the Gil Alhamad deck, and it's got Quick Cast. Uh, you may play this card anytime you have priority, cancel target spell. And the cool part is, is that, again, most of the cancels from this set onward aren't, like, they're not all-encompassing. Like, for instance, Kagia's two-drop cancel is only for chance, um, and then there's the five drop, uh, whatever one that has, uh, oh, here we go. Phone's being weird again. Boop. Sorry. Uh, that one's also got, like, it's a five drop and you can play it for free for every second magic. It's every second spell, uh, to cancel. Uh, and that's another important thing. I learned that the hard way in my, uh, match against Dayman, always play your most key cards for that turn first, just in case they've got one of those severing wins in their hand. Anyway, I run four of these things. If you've got a, a Gentle Breeze Elemental in your grave, you can pop it for two. So people are expecting you to need to have three open or whatever, but you keep one of those in your grave and you can pop it for two and kind of surprise your opponent. It helps slow down your opponent just because this deck hits pretty hard at the beginning, but then fizzles out around like turn five or six and then picks up after that as well. Anyway, so going on with my three drops. We've got Concord of Saints and Beasts. It's a three drop, one green, one red, and one colorless. Quick cast as well. This deck is just chocked full of quick cast. Choose one. If you control a fire J slash resonator or another wind J slash resonator, you may choose both. Target J slash resonator you control deals damage equal to its attack to target J slash resonator your opponent controls. Or whenever a resonator that was dealt damage this turn by a J slash resonator you control is put into a graveyard from your opponent's field. You may put the top card of your Magic Stone deck into your field. So 
It's a fight card that's got quick cast. I run three of them and it's phenomenal because you don't even have to use it during your turn. With the quick cast, you can just leave your resonator uh, rested after attacking them. They'll try to body into it. You'll remove a, a gentle breeze elemental from your grave to produce one green to play um, that one plus six plus six, the winds of vitality. Um, to give it the buff to make it stronger than your opponent, then you'll tap this thing uh, for its second ability, and then suddenly you just got a free stone during your opponent's turn, and your dude's alive. So, yep, I run three of these things. They're phenomenal for stone ramping, and we run red-green resonators in this deck, so it works really well with both abilities. Then my final three drop is Zero's Circle of Protection. It's a ridiculously massive pain in the back end when you're playing essentially very little removal. So it's phenomenal in this deck. And so it's a three drop addition, one white and two colorless. When this card enters the field, choose an attribute. J slash resonators you control, gain barrier of the chosen attribute. And that's it. It just, it helps protect against all those pesky um, heteroclite Excaliburs or just like field wipes and stuff like that that do target. And then the last of our chance is Prissia's Leap. It's one green, one red, and X. Uh, target J slash resin your control may attack up to X times this turn until the end of turn. Attacking does not cause uh, that card to rest. So that's another important um, little tidbit that I have overlooked so many times when playing this card. I always thought that it just lets you attack X number of times and then that's the end of the ability, but apparently even after you've attacked for the Xth time, your Resonator stays recovered on the field because it can't be rested from attacking for the entire turn. So that's phenomenal. A lot of the times I'll get this with five stones, so I'll put green, red into casting and then three into X, attack six times, or sorry, attack six times, attack three times duh, with, uh, for example, the card that works perfectly in combination with this Sylvia Blade of the Supreme King. And then at the end of turn, it would be recovered on the field. So I run two of the Prissia's Leap, and the cool thing about the combination with Prissia's Leap and Sylvia Blade of the Supreme King is that one has Whiffness, it's a 6-6, six, six, one red, one green, but whenever this card attacks, target J slash Resonator cannot block this turn. So if I gave this thing Dreams of Flight, uh, let's say I had six stones, uh, Dreams of Flight, so it's got flying, so I'll fly over my opponent if he's got no flyers, and then do five uh, into Prissia's Leap, so it can attack three times. I fly over, um, let's say somewhere in the range of eight, so I'll do, uh, what is it, 24 damage to my opponent, and then three of their resonators can't block that turn, which is fan freaking tastic Anyway, so I'll get into my resonators. I actually don't really have that many in this deck. I think I've got nine in total. I'm running four of quite literally one of my favorite green resonators that I'm currently aware of, which is Little Red Fairy Tale of Air. She's a 3-3, one drop green fairy tale resonator. Uh, this card gains plus one, plus one for each wind magic stone you control, which is every stone in this deck. And this card gains swiftness as long as you control a non-special wind magic stone. So again, your ideal first turn is to have uh, one wind magic stone come in and then uh, tap to cast this thing and then you got a 4-4 four, four with swiftness and you hit your opponent if you're going first. I run four of these. Then you've already seen the next gal coming up here. Sylvia, a blade of the Supreme King. You guys know what she does. I run four of them. Phenomenal combination with that um, red-green oh, colorless battle card and, of course, Prissia's Leap. So, four of those. And then the final resonator. It seems like every resonator in Gil's deck is, is chicks. Hmm, I guess Gil was a, 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 a bit of a ladies' man even back in the day. Anyway, so she is a five drop, two green and three colorless. Prissia ready for the final battle. She's a beast resonator, will of hope, not that that matters. When this card enters a field or whenever it attacks, destroy target resonator your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to this card. If you do, put two 1-1 one, one counters on this card. So that was my... I guess I was thinking of making like this funny meme with this thing with like... Uh, 
uh, McCree or whatever from uh, League of Legends on the cover, and it's got like Gil's face, and it's like, reach for the sky, or draw, because this deck has a lot of drawing. Anyway, so this is my Gil the Gifted Conqueror deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. As usual, um, like, subscribe, give us your constructive criticism. You guys have been ridiculously awesome for this in the past. This is... This is a, de a decently work in progress deck. I do like the way it plays, and when I was playing up against Dayman's Kage deck, I realized that the deck was actually playing very well. The only thing that was wrong was the order in which I was doing things. It's super important to cast things the right way, and then with the new counters that I put into the deck, it's important that you have those Gentle Breeze Elementals in your grave, and that you kind of like leave a couple of mana or sorry, a couple of will open per turn just in case your opponent drops some big baddies that you want to stop in the meantime. So the deck is really great. It hits really fast. You can win in like the first four or five turns and then you have a little bit of a of a lull until maybe like turn seven or eight until things start hitting for really hard again. Um, I don't think I'm going to change it too much post pre-release. Yeah, well, this is a deck. You guys can... Tell me what you think. Um, and yeah, just as usual, enjoy. And I hope you guys have a great time at pre-release. I'll be sure that uh, Damon and I just like post a lot of stuff. Maybe we'll even record some of the stuff we do at pre-release with the little like funny 20 card decks that we make for Sealed. Or we'll just make some decks for Panda and Rhea and uh, Curic and all that stuff. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.